but the procedure of weigh-ins, um, obviously the scale must be placed on a flat surface, um, level surface, and zero out the bar so that it's floating. It should be the 10 pound weight um, as we went over to zero out the scale. Um, the, then the scale is set to the ball carrier weight limit for that age group. Um, make sure that that is set ahead of time so that there is no need to adjust it at all through the entire weighing process. Um, weigh masters, exchange books. You fill out the ineligible player form and weigh in of the opposing team. Um, at the end of the weigh in and filling out the ineligible player forms, both weigh masters must sign both ineligible player forms. You keep the opposing team's ineligible player form. Um, Make sure when the players come up to be weighed in that they are giving their name. Obviously, easier to check them off, but they are handing their helmet to the weighmaster for one, so the weighmaster can verify that it's intact. There is a chin strap. Um, can take a peek to make sure they have a mouth guard. If you don't see one, you could just ask them, "Hey, where's your mouth guard?" Or, "Do you have one back at the field?" Um, if they don't have one, that is something that needs to be taken back to the coach of that team and be addressed there, not at weigh-ins. We're just verifying. Um, with the player, once they're weighed, then they take the helmet back from the weigh master. They should not be weighed with their helmet on. Um, players only weigh in one time. They can't step off, remove items to weigh in again. You weigh in once. As long as you are fully equipped for gameplay, that is your way. So, with the weigh-in sheets, this is filled out only the first game that the player plays. Not every player may be at the first game of the season. If that happens, the game that that player plays in for the first time, you would fill this sheet out for them. Otherwise, this sheet is not written on at any other point in the season. When you weigh the child in, the player in, for the first time, you mark whether they're over ball carrying weight or their weight is okay, and you initial. That's it. You do nothing else. If one of the players on this sheet is not there for weigh-ins, you do not cross them off. Just you skip not, it. You do not do anything else with the sheet other than check the box, overweight, weight okay, and initial. Uh, rules pertaining to weigh-in. Weigh-in takes place 30 minutes before game time with the visiting team weighing in first. Each host state will provide an exact 10 pound weight of the scale station. The scale will be adjusted to the 10 pound weight before the weigh-in procedure at each game. Uh, each team will provide a weigh master that is not a coach. So you can have a official site weigh master for the home team that does every game. That's absolutely fine. Um, but you do have to have a minimum of one weigh master per team. Coaches may not be within 50 feet of weigh-ins or a fine and possible suspension will be imposed. If any issues arise at the weigh-in, not call over the coach. A written list of ineligible players, ball carriers for the game must be presented by the weigh master of each team to the opposing team at the time of weigh-in. Our suggestion is to have your ineligible player form filled out before the start of the weigh-in process. You know which kids on your roster aren't going to be at the game or aren't there yet. Or um, injured. Injured. And also your um, typical um, ineligible ball carriers, you know. Uh, and if they, you have any that vary from week to week, don't put them on the list until wait. Um, but at least it'll cut down a lot of time at the wait.
A player arriving after the first half of the game is not eligible to play. If a player arrives after weigh-ins have closed, the weighmaster will weigh the player as soon as possible and the player will be eligible to play during the second half of the game. Weighmasters must weigh late players. The 10 play minimum rule still applies to a tardy player. So for clarification, the end of the second quarter before halftime starts is the first half of the game. You must weigh a player in up until that point. This includes any player that is at weigh-ins but doesn't have all of their equipment. They can be weighed in later on once all of their equipment arrives. Um, and any player that was listed on your ineligible player form because they weren't there can simply be crossed off after they are weighed in. Um, following is the minimum required equipment that must be worn at weigh-ins. Two hip pads, one tail pad, two knee pads, two thigh pads, pants, game shoes, game shoulder pads, and jersey. None of these items may be changed after weighing. The only exception is a kicker may change a kicking shoe, but that is not normal. Yeah, it's not typical. It's not typical for our age range of players. So with that, if a child shows up in tennis shoes and says, "I don't have cleats." If they are going to play in their tennis shoes, they can weigh in in their tennis shoes. If they are waiting for cleats, you wait to weigh them in when their cleats arrive. Any optional equipment that is to be worn in the game must be worn at weigh-ins. Optional equipment may include socks, arm pads, cowboy collars, gloves, undergarments, knee braces, elbow pads, kidney pads, and rib protectors. Bandanas or skull caps are not allowed. So anything that covers the head is not worn in weigh-ins. It cannot be worn during the game. It voids the manufacture of the, the warranty on the helmets. So there's nothing nothing over the head can't be worn in. But if they have a rib protector that they put on or a shirt with built-in rib protectors, they need to be worn during weigh-ins because that is not something we can exclude. It has to be weighed in with. All ineligible ball carriers must have a one inch stripe of a contrasting color to any other color on the helmet. Clearly visible, placed horizontally on the front and back of their helmets. Horizontally, not vertically. Yes, do not stripe along the seams of the helmet. And if the kid wants an extra piece of tape to go over his current piece of tape, give them the piece of tape. You do not have to re-tape every time. If there's already a piece of tape, you can leave it. But if that child, there are players that would like the additional piece, go ahead and get to it. And you don't have to remove the tape from a prior game if the helmet is already stretched. Shoes must be of the molded cleat or internally threaded shoes where no post is extending from the shoe. Instead, the cleat post screws internally into the shoe. Maximum size of the cleat is half inch, measured from the tip of the cleat base to the base of the shoe. No all or primarily metal or metal tip cleats may be worn. Make sure they're molded cleats and they're not metal cleats. The easiest way to verify this is when your players are lined up at the start of weigh-ins, have them face away from you, and everyone lift their right foot, walk down the line, make sure there's no metal cleat showing, and then put that foot down and lift the left foot and walk back. You can verify really quick, and then you also make sure that your kids are lined up in the proper order. TVYFL would like to remind coaches and weighmasters that the weigh-in process should be a friendly place for both the players and the volunteers. We would, we should not be attempting to win games from the scale as the sole responsibility of the weighmaster is to weigh the player and stripe them if need be. That's it. 
Any safety concerns should be communicated to their team's head coach so they can confer with the other coach and the official's crew if, they need, if needed to resolve a safety concern. We're only verifying ball carrying weight and striking the ones that are not eligible. Rules of play 10-6C-III. Only two waymasters are allowed in the weigh-in process. Each team will provide a waymaster that is not a coach at the scales at the time of weigh-in. No more than two waymasters from each team will be allowed at the scales during weigh-in. TVYFL uh, executives and association board members are exempt from this unless they are coaching a team involved in the weigh-in. Waymasters do not have the authority to disqualify, disqualify players for no mouthpiece, straps, or chewed up mouthpieces, worn out pleats, etc. If there are discrepancies, rules of play 10-6-J, the chain of command for discrepancy is the field greeter or site official. official, head of officials, so the white hat, and then division president. Waymasters are to communicate to both coaches of any safety concerns with both coaches working with the officials to determine if the child can play. If metal is showing from the cleats, the player should replace them. If they're unable to, the head official will make the determination if the player is ineligible to play in those cleats. The TVYFL board recommends that association carry extra cleats to avoid a player being ineligible to play, but it's not mandatory. And the rest of it is stated in here. So really what that means is we're weighing them in, we're seeing if they can carry the ball, we're taping the ones that can't, and we're wishing them a good game. It should be a fun, easy, quick experience for everybody on, on all sides. We're not disqualifying players, you don't. You can't disqualify players. You just know things like, with the exception of a no mouth guard, you let the coach know. If there is a discrepancy on a roster or a weigh-in sheet with the order of players or they're weighing in someone that isn't listed, that is something that needs to be addressed with the association president and the division president outside of weigh-ins. Finish the process. Um, take note of the player's name, number, so that it can be addressed outside the audience of the entire team and outside the audience of that player in particular um, so that it can be resolved in an orderly fashion. At the end of the day, kids play football. That's, that's perfect. That, that is really what we are. We are just here to assist kids to get to play football. If the scale bounces, if the bar bounces at weigh in, is the player an ineligible ball carrier? So if the scale, when a player steps up, it always bounces for a minute, right? It better it'll go up and down. If it goes up and down and up and down and then levels out, so if it doesn't go up and stay up like me, I do not carry the ball at 3-4. If it goes up and stays up, they're ineligible. If it bounces and comes down and does not touch the top, they're eligible to carry. I left my jersey at home. It's on its way. Can I still play today? I will weigh you in as soon as your jersey makes it to the field and on your body. Um, and because the opposing team has the ineligible player form, you are the opposing team is the one that needs to win. You have that form with you, and you can verify whether they are or are not ball carrying weight, so you already have the correct form to weigh them in. The reason why we are checking whether they are at weight or above weight or below weight on the book is let's say hypothetically you get to a field and we can't get this to calibrate and it's not making any sense or the scale is broken and we can't find one at all, you refer and revert back to what the book says in the very first game that child played in. So if they were under the very first game that they played in, they are also under at this game because there's no scale. 